they sort out the musical history of the 20th century, Andre Segovia will stand tall among the giants. Single-handedly, he gave birth to the music of the classical guitar. Indeed, his very name came to represent a standard by which all other classical guitarists are judged. Well, as it happens, I had been a student of classical guitar 20-some years ago, and just a few months ago suggested that we profile Andre Segovia. We contacted him, and as you're going to see, he couldn't have been more enthusiastic. In February, on his invitation, I flew to Madrid to see him. What follows then is our farewell to the master. <laughs> Andre Segovia had more than his share of parties. This may not match those of his youth, but as Shakespeare wrote, elders should be blessed with honor, love, obedience, and troops of friends. Segovia had all these. This celebration was last February, his 94th birthday, at a restaurant near his home in Madrid. Old friends and new, plus associates from the music world, joined his wife and 17-year-old son, yes, he's just 17, to wish the maestro well. He told me later that he'd partied till the wee small hours, typical zest for a man who for over 80 years had been perfecting a talent that he considered a gift from God. I received it from heaven, the vocation for music, but when I heard the guitar, you know, uh, in, in unconsciously, I fell in love with it. Segovia was more than the most famous player ever of the classical guitar. He was a musical institution. When he began playing in the 1890s, there was relatively little music written for the instrument, no standard playing techniques, and few teachers to nurture gifted students. Within sight of the 1990s, Segovia could look back on generations of disciples who are building their own careers thanks to his. American guitarist Christopher Parkening. Well, Segovia has single-handedly uh, brought the guitar to a position of being a major concert classical instrument. Prior to uh, Segovia, the guitar was not recognized as such, and he is really to the guitar what Paganini was to the violin or Liszt to the piano. The legend of Andres Segovia casts an imposing shadow in Spain's southern province of Andalusia, where he was born in 1893. His earliest memories were of music, of being five or six, fascinated by an old beggar strumming a guitar. The poor man, looking at me, how I was listening to him. He said, do you like to, to learn? And my uncle just smiled and said, yes. An uncle and aunt raised Segovia, and when he was 10, the family settled in the cultural center of Granada. From his bedroom window, he could see the medieval fortress of the Moors, the Alhambra, and could listen to street musicians playing flamenco. The guitar was the instrument of the common people not meant for concert halls. His family would have preferred young Andres to take up a more respectable instrument, the violin or piano, perhaps. But Segovia was already won over by the guitar. Segovia's instincts told him that to make beautiful sounds, he needed a finely crafted instrument. He saved, borrowed, and got his guitar. Segovia gave his first public concert here in Granada in 1909. He was 16 years old at the time, but with the determination and optimism that was typical of Andalusians, he decided then and there to become, as he said, the apostle of the guitar. When Segovia played in Madrid in 1912, one critic said that God would punish him for daring to bring the lowly guitar into concert halls. 
But what genius has ever been deterred by critics? Over the next 15 years, Segovia triumphed. He toured throughout Spain, Europe, and South America, and in 1928, performed at New York's Town Hall. Now composers felt encouraged to write for the guitar and for the man who had developed such a distinctive sound. Most guitarists play uh, just with the nails of their right hand, and they get uh, somewhat a thin, or it's sometimes called a metallic or tinny sound, which is, is something like this. But Segovia's great sound is warmer, and uh, it involves a combination of nail and finger tip, and he slices or angles his right hand through the string, which gives, gives the sound a warmer, or sweeter sound. takes care of your nails myself and three times a week because I have it to polish it with very fine emery because uh, a nail that is too long and that has been cut produces a very bad sound just as Segovia was coming into his own, so too were the tools to spread his gospel. Sound recordings, radio, films, and beginning in the 1950s, television, including American prime time. My father had seen Segovia on the Ed Sullivan Show and enjoyed his performance, and so at one point he saw a Segovia record in the bargain bin at Woolworths, and he picked it up and brought it home, and I went nuts. I couldn't believe it. Mary Ackerman is a doctoral candidate in music. She's one of 12 gifted students selected to study with the maestro at a University of Southern California master class. The classes were part of a Segovia celebration last summer, a chance for a select few to spend 20 minutes a day for eight days under the stern and watchful eye and ear of the maestro. But not here, because I am measuring, and you anticipate always. Do you understand? May I try once again? Or... No, 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 no. Thank you. Don't be angry. Segovia always said to teach is to learn twice. And for most of his career, he scheduled these short, intense sessions for gifted pupils. This one was in Spain in 1965. If you want to find out about a particular way that he's producing a sound, you need to literally watch him demonstrate that section of the piece. No te va a picar porque suprimir eso para que todo it was a terrifying experience to be one of nine chosen uh, from all over the world and to have him look through his rather thick glasses and single you out to uh, perform next for him. Christopher Parkening was a very talented 16-year-old when he came up against Segovian perfectionism at a master class at Berkeley in 1964. Suddenly, the floor shook when Segovia smashed his foot on the floor and he stopped me in the middle of the piece and said, never in my life could I play that like that. And I, I said, what is wrong? And he said, you have changed the fingerings on the piece. And what had happened, my former teacher had changed the fingerings to make the piece easier. Only it had, it had taken the musicianship out of, out of the piece. And Segovia was so angry and his wife was kind of holding him back. And, and uh, finally he said, uh, change it back tomorrow and i came back the next day and changed it for segovia the rewards of teaching went beyond the professional level he met his third wife amelia when she was a guitar student in her early 20s recently they celebrated their 25th wedding anniversary and she was never far from his side what was he like as a teacher well he was very severe with all the pupils and more to me what was she like as a student? Very good, but she has uh, also a, you know, a character 
difficult for a people. <laughs> <laughs> okay for a wife, but yes. difficult for a pupil. She, she wanted to do what she wanted. Segovia moved slowly, but he maintained a hectic schedule. Last fall, after a European concert tour, the Segovias came to New York's Metropolitan Museum to present two of his oldest guitars to the musical instrument collection. The instruments were being retired. The maestro most certainly was not. I invite all of you to my next concert. <laughs> Glad to have this here. Segovia created his own unofficial museum in his studio in Madrid, where he was surrounded by paintings and drawings and photos and honors, the trappings of a long, successful, and very famous life. He seemed proud of every bit of memorabilia, but was especially eager to tell us about his youngest son. Carlos Andres was born in 1970 when the maestro was 77. What kind of music does Carlos? Like. Not very good. Not, not good. <laughs> uh, I think music's very important for me too. Well, not, not the sort of music my father plays as well. Not cl really classical music. What kind of music do you do you like? Uh, well, most of new wave music came from England since 1980. He has no vocation for music. You don't think he, he does not want to be a musician. Mm. <laughs> we did see Segovia in an unusual role, a consultant to me on the purchase of a new uh, guitar. I think I'm too I think that this, this is the best. The maestro's guitar maker sent over three guitars for us to look at. What was it like? Well, if you're a baseball nut, like having Ted Williams pick out your bat. I had studied classical guitar 20 years ago, so this was a rare opportunity. It's a nice, nice tone. I can't tell you how I feel holding a guitar even the first Select to that. You think this would, this, this is the best? But this, this for me, is the best. Thank you again. Segovia would have been the first to admit that this had been a very good life, a full life in which he achieved all he set out to. Still, his choice was to continue as performer, teacher, and standard bearer for the classical guitar. There was no stopping him. Do you know what I'm saying? If I am tired now, I don't mind because I have the eternity to rest. I have eternity to rest. Well, now that Andres Segovia has embarked on that final phase, we wish him all the best and thank him again for the legacy he left. Because he was obsessed with the importance of the guitar, I think you can't hear a well-played guitar now without hearing Segovia. Every artist playing has been inspired by this man. He was a tower of musical integrity, but he will also be remembered as a person of warmth and humor who exuded a deep wisdom without preaching. I am honored to have been one of his friends. We'll be right back.